Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about using your iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. I feel like they should have showed something like this off in the keynote. Like, I know they're going for a general audience and maybe they don't care about this necessarily, but like, that is such a cool thing. And I feel like one of the, I've only been on Twitter a little bit after the keynote today, but one of the th- impressions I'm getting from people is that there's tons of cool stuff in these releases that they didn't even discuss on stage. Um, We'll get to this with watchOS, I'm sure, but like there's just like these really cool features that are either like they're fixing paper cuts that there just were in the using the system or like they're pretty substantial updates that are super cool and but they didn't say a word about them. And like we're discovering these things like I was I I was more excited listening to you move a file (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> from just imagining what that was like than I was for a good portion of the iPad portion of this uh, <laughs> keynote. Hello there, and welcome to another episode of iPad Pros. It is a very exciting week in all things Apple, and particularly the iPad. There was a lot of things announced at this year's Worldwide Developer Conference 2021, in which Apple announced iPad OS 15. So on this episode, we're going to be diving into all of the things announced at WWDC 2021, not only the iPad stuff, but also the Mac, the Apple Watch, and just everything. Uh, We do focus quite a bit on the iPad, but uh, we do talk about everything. There are chapter markers in the Patreon version and also just in the show description as well uh, if you want to see what those timestamps are. Uh, Joining me today to discuss all of this is Matt Birchler of birchtree.me and the A Better Computer YouTube channel. And we just had a great time talking about all of this stuff announced from Apple at WWDC 2021. So uh, before we get to that, I just had a couple of new findings since recording this episode that I just want to share at the top of this episode here. And the first is a new discovery regarding the new multitasking system in iPadOS. Uh, Prior, I had thought you had to tap on that three-dot icon to pull up the menu to enable multitasking and pick what do you want to do with this app. But that's not the case. You can actually drag that triple-dot icon, you know, just drag it down or click it and, you know, drag it down with the trackpad, and that will get you to the home screen where you can go to the app library or spotlight uh, to pull up whatever app you want to enter into split view with, with that app. So you don't need to tap and go into that whole menu. You can just just drag that app down and it will get you into that home screen to get into multitasking super fast to do that split screen. So that's a really cool discovery that will really speed up split screen going in and out of with the iPad in also making this super friendly if you're just on the tablet, Uh, no keyboard at all. The other discovery I had tonight was in Control Center. If you're using an app like Filmic Pro, you'll see this new options at the very top for center stage if you're on an M1 iPad Pro, and that lets you enable center stage on or off in Control Center uh, at will. And you can see it reflecting live underneath in the preview in Filmic Pro, and that'll switch between the center stage camera and the normal front-facing software camera. And this is a really great addition to iPadOS 15 because prior in 14, you have to go to the settings app to literally switch on or off what camera you want to use. And this will be great for Zoom if you want to switch off center stage, if you're having a drink of water or some food. And this will enable you to just very quickly switch that on and off within Control Center. The other finding I had in Control Center was uh, the microphone additions to FaceTime. This uh, voice-focused and wide audio spectrum and just standard ability of the microphone. You're able to switch between all three of those. It appears to be a system-wide mic API that developers will be able to enable. I'm not totally sure on that because the options are there now control center in iPadOS 15, but the apps don't support it yet. So it's there kind of teasing you, but that's not really fully enabled quite yet. So those are just a couple of comments to open this episode before we dive into all the great things uh, that me and Matt get to chat about. Before we get to chat about that, I just want to remind everybody, you can support the podcast over at patreon.com slash iPad pros, get episodes early and with the embedded chapter markers. 
And you get some bonus content at the higher tiers, like iPad Ponderings, iPad Story, and iPad Possibilities. And uh, these shows will also be coming to Apple Podcasts. I did figure out how to get them on there. And those will be available as well whenever that launches as another option to support the podcast. And then you can also support the podcast for free just by heading over to Apple Podcasts and leaving a review. Reviews help others discover the show by helping Apple circulate the show more in search. Uh, because of the signals that you send through awesome reviews. With that, here's my discussion with Matt, all about WWDC 2021. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. I was so excited to talk to you today because I know you're a huge fan about the Apple Watch, as am I, but uh, iPad as well. You're big into the iPad and uh, a lot of good stuff there this year. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm, I'm still reeling, I think, from trying to just process everything that we saw today. Um, Lots of stuff. Yeah, it went quick, and they didn't have time for everything. And uh, yeah, so what you're hearing tonight or today as you listen to this episode is at 6.30 Eastern uh, on the day of Apple's keynote on Monday, and the keynote ended around 1.30, 2 o'clock Eastern. So so just a couple hours later, I've installed the beta on my iPad and used it for probably two or three hours at this point and have some thoughts uh, from that usage and... Uh, We've been diving into everything that's, you know, come out since that. And uh, so in the coming weeks, there will be, of course, more information that we learn about. So this is, you know, the very first impressions we have here. These are hot takes. Very hot, as it is <laughs> blistering hot, uh, where both of us are recording. I think it's above 90 degrees in the room I'm at now. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm cooking over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, uh, let's go in keynote order, I should say. And we'll skip over some stuff that's less interesting, I should say. And they start with iOS which I thought was interesting. That's, hey, let's do iOS first. And all these things tended to be pretty linked together, even Mac stuff linked back to iOS and uh, in cool ways. So uh, the first thing mm-hmm. I talked about was commu- communication and FaceTime, and we're getting you know spatial audio for FaceTime to make it sound like you're in the same room as the person that you're talking to with voice isolation. So if there's like a vacuum cleaner going off right behind you, get rid of that. Spectrum mode of having music classes over FaceTime. And- yeah, that was interesting. I... I thought it was really interesting how I think this is maybe more time in a any Apple keynote that FaceTime has ever gotten. Even I, I, I feel like they did more than when FaceTime was announced. Yeah, in like the 32 everything. Uh, conference call, more than that even too. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like they talked about it in iOS, then they talked more in iPadOS, then I think it came up in the AirPod segment, and then it was in the Mac. Like it was everywhere. Like I've got like lists of like what they talked about, and there's just like so much here, which makes total sense. I mean, given yeah. the last year of like <laughs> what software do we need to, that's essential and could improve. And Apple themselves are using WebEx and this FaceTime link thing, maybe they'll start yeah. using FaceTime to do their own things, which they couldn't before. Yeah. Is it weird that like that is the that the, the FaceTime link thing is the th- like of all the things they announced, that was the one thing where I was like, oh, they actually want like companies to use this, not just people. Because you can make a link for a call yeah. and throw that in a, in a meeting invite, right? Like, And uh, finally, you know, FaceTime and open standard... <laughs> <laughs> Back in uh, 2010, you know? <laughs> the iPhone 4. No, uh-huh. that's not right at all. 2013. I don't know. It was the iPhone 4 when it was. I don't know. It's been a while. Uh, yep. Open standard. Uh, finally, coming to Android and Windows via the web. And I guess anything with a decent web browser could do this as well. Yep. Via, via closed system, but still, uh, you know, on those devices. <laughs> so it's it's totally progress. Yeah, I can FaceTime my uh, my siblings that have Android phones. Yeah, I, I I hope that I, I I'm sure it won't, but I'd love to see that come out in the beta at some point and try that out because uh, my my family over the past year, like my parents and my siblings and I, have done like uh, calls every couple of weeks and we use Zoom because yeah. everyone except for one of us is on an iPhone and so we can't do FaceTime, so we do Zoom, and it would be really cool if this just actually works nicely. Um, I mean, the dream is that you could like say this is a progressive web app on your Android phone and you could just like open the FaceTime app and open Chrome. You probably can't start calls from it i guess but right. the fact that you can get on the calls in the first place is is definitely a move in the right direction oh yeah and then the other big thing with this is share play which this sounds amazing just first off from a tech support angle of you know someone you're trying to help use their phone or ipad you can just do a share play instance where mm-hmm. they're sharing your screen with you. I don't think you can control their screen, but you can actually at least point them around. Yeah, I don't think it's remote users. It doesn't look like. But yeah, you, it looks like you can just follow them around and talk, be the voice in their ear as they 
move around and tap the buttons they need to tap. Yeah, that, that, that's huge. I, that is really, really nice. Like for dealing with parents, especially like my, my mom has been shopping for a new iPhone for like two years, um, which is completely foreign to me as someone who shops for like 10 seconds. Sure. <laughs> because, well, we don't need to get into my uh, my uh, vices when it comes to spending money on phones. But um <laughs> Like helping her with like phone stuff is so difficult. It'd be really great to just be able to do this and like jump on a call with her, have her tap a button and I'm seeing her as she goes and be like, tap that thing. Like, I think it sounds really nice. Yeah. And then this is also kind of cool for just friends hanging out on FaceTime. You can listen to an, a playlist or album together and you can kind of have party mode where people are adding to a playlist and also movies and TV shows. They announced Disney Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, uh, Paramount all will integrate with this as well as of course Apple's TV app. And uh, the one question I have is do you all have to be subscribed to the same service? Yeah, that's what, that's what I was wondering too. I, also, Netflix is notably absent as Netflix is absent from playing with anybody else's tools yeah. it seems. <laughs> but yeah, that looks super nice. Like I've I've definitely done a couple of those uh, where a couple friends get on um, and we do like an iMessage thing or something and we watch a thing. But it it is kind of the the thing they showed in the presentation is like you all have to like synchronize when you hit play and right. it doesn't automatically do it for you and you've got to like figure it out and people are like wait what are you guys laughing at oh i'm a little behind oh <laughs> and so <laughs> and Disney Plus has this natively so it's kind of cool they're mm-hmm. also doing this way too they just want people sharing their content uh, however they can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if Netflix added this, this would be a killer feature. I, I, I think there's definitely some room for it now with like everyone else, but like, uh, it's so frustrating how Netflix doesn't seem to want to play with any ecosystems besides their own. Like, they want you with the Netflix app. Yeah, and I watch l- less Netflix content as a result of that. I just, I just do. It's <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, kind of a little bit for me. Mm-hmm. And I did see a little bit in the um, State of the Union for apps, and at the end of this, they showed the SharePlay API. And the, they demoed this whiteboard app where each person in the SharePlay instance has the native app installed and it will live add drawlings to each other's app and you can add to it. And it's a shared kind of whiteboard instance of the same file being updated instantly across all the devices back and forth. And so developers can do some really cool things with this API. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Okay. So... It, it's it's like a way to add collaboration, like real time collaboration to your app in a way that's yeah maybe easier than before. Yeah, um, it, I'm not sure if you all have to be in a FaceTime for SharePlay to be active, but uh, the thing they were demoing was yeah this whiteboard where they were all drawing simultaneously and it was all working mm-hmm. seamlessly. Interesting. That would be really cool if that would if it made it easier for developers to do that because like the real time collaboration in something like Google Docs is incredible, but yeah. like. Google had to build that. <laughs> yep. um, and if this makes it so that smaller companies, like if Bear Notes was able to add this or Craft was able to do this, all of Craft may have collaboration already. But anyway, like if they could do this in some sort of native way that's easy to implement, that that sounds really exciting. I didn't see the developer state of the union, so I, I didn't see this, but that sounds like it could be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Tim Nahumek uh, messaged me and uh, suggested perhaps Ferrite can somehow record audio over SharePlay and do some kind of podcasting thing. I don't know how deep the extension or oh. API goes. That'd be kind of cool, but I don't think it's possible. The dream. <laughs> it's it, it's getting us closer. I mean, this uh, this this may be a thing um, we want to talk about when we get specifically to the iPad, but it it it's definitely a new way to solve kind of old problems. Like it's not just doing implementing the Mac way of doing something. It's it, it sounds like it could be doing a new weird like <laughs> <laughs> I I don't really know exactly, but it's 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 like it's I, I I kept thinking about this when we saw the iPad stuff with like sort of Windows, but not really Windows. Yeah. Like it's still iPad ish, but any, anyway, I I'm getting off the off the track. <laughs> Tracks a little bit here. And then there's portrait FaceTime as well, which would work on the iPad Pro with its Face ID camera. I wonder if that works in conjunction with, probably doesn't, with center stage, if it could follow you while still being a portrait. That'd be interesting. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, do you have to choose one or the other? Yeah. It, I, I would hope it would be better than the uh, the software ones that you've got in like Zoom and Google and stuff, right. like everyone now, because those are pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, they are. So I'd imagine it's using the FaceTime camera and only works with that stuff, but maybe it's software. Um. And then I just thought it was interesting, the voice isolation, the iMac mics, they kind of demoed that with that device. Kind of curious. Uh, that was hardware and this is software. 
Yeah, you're right. They did. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's another thing. Uh, NVIDIA actually on the Windows side has a thing where if you have an NVIDIA GPU, they're doing some stuff with like advanced noise cancellation uh, for like a, like really loud noises in the background. Um, but for those, you need like a dedicated GPU that's big and loud. It runs on a desktop or I suppose a, 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 a chunky laptop. <laughs> but yeah. like this is going to happen in your iPhone. Right. Um, that's pretty remarkable. And I'm thinking of it now, so I just want to mention it. It's kind of like they use the tech for probably sound isolation with the AirPods for maybe some of this tech. But also it seems like there's like a transparency mode plus where it's like enhancing people talking to you through the microphone. Yeah. Kind of reminds like, oh, it's transparency, but even better if you're, you know, needing to talk with somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, the that um, AirPod segment was was really cool to see. Like, not like not hearing aids necessarily, but just like continuing with like it, more accessibility features, uh, even in the hardware that they sell, not just software features. Yeah, and I'd probably use that in certain situations actually, <laughs> especially if it like tries to damper out. If it does like noise canceling of the junk you don't want to hear and just it's just like enhances people talking to you that could be interesting mm-hmm. yeah for sure like a noisy restaurant i can never hear what people are saying like it's just like what what was that i just feel totally <laughs> out of the loop at restaurant tables mm-hmm. i'm sorry but <laughs> hopefully this will help <laughs> yeah so um messages was the next kind of pillar of communication and one of the cool things was stacks of photos and these can be added to your library automatically or you just hitting a button in the messages app that says it's out of library and I did that today for a single photo, and I just hit a button, and now it's in my mm-hmm. library. Uh, the stack of photo thing is cool because now when you send like twenty photos, it doesn't like take up a huge oh, scrolling God. thing in your thread. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm super excited about that. Like, I'm always self conscious to send more than like one or two photos because I know it's going to devastate the chat. <laughs> right. <laughs> but now I won't feel bad so, about that. Yeah. Won't feel bad. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll feel like I'm giving them a present because it's a beautiful UI. Like, it looks great. Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, swiping through them looks good. You can expand and everything. They did, like, they talked about automatically adding things from your chats. Like, we'll automatically add the ones where you were there or something like that. Right. It'll detect your face or something. <sighs> I don't fully understand. I don't really understand how that works, but yeah. That I will say it was very nice just having a little download button next to an image and you're able to yeah. add whatever you want into there. Mm-hmm. And it's good that they're not automatically adding memes to my library because that would be annoying. I suppose, although my, my library is full of memes. Like, my library does not look like <laughs> what you see in Apple presentations. I've got screenshots. I've got actual photos. I've got memes. I've got everything. I've got video clips. It's all, it's a it's a whole mess. <laughs> yeah, in my daily photo widget thing, when I, I, I basically use it as a tool to look through stock images I've used in the past of, like, nature and stuff that shouldn't be in my library and delete mm-hmm. them because I'm trying to clean up my library just of mm. photos I've taken. And uh, sometimes the uh, widget can do a good job at surfacing those. I'd almost like a widget from a third party that surfaces photos that sh- aren't mine that can help me just like daily just look <laughs> through and delete stuff. Yeah, that would that would be nice. I Man, I don't know. I I might be a weird, weird one, but I love having all those like stupid photos in my library and having them <laughs> synced forever. Like I, I, every once in a while, like I'll like scroll all the way to the top of the photos app and like find my screenshots from like 2009 and be like, those are oh, fun. This is, this is hideous. And I love it. Yeah. I love <laughs> the old, old screenshots from like iOS six days. Those are just a blast. Yeah. And like now I'm in the habit of like keeping every screenshot I take, even if it's just like a one-off thing, just so that in like 10 years down the road, I can see what iOS 15 looked like. And yeah. I, I assume I'll be like, oh man, it looks so old and terrible, but I can't imagine that now, but you never never can imagine it when, I, yeah. when it's happening, I suppose. And then they're expanding the shared with you thing. So before in messages, you'd see in Safari on the splash screen kind of shared with you links. And sometimes I'd check those out occasionally. Um, and they're throwing those into news, music, TV, and photos, and I think some other apps where it'll kind of scatter some of the stuff shared with you where you can look at it later yeah i thought that was a really interesting way to address kind of that problem like i definitely have the problem where you like someone sends you something and then you don't act on it right away and then you forget about it and never see it again i kind of wish they did this with messages like if someone asked you a question and you didn't answer like if they could surface that again somewhere (laughs) easily for you but i kind of like the idea of like if you missed a photo and you're looking at your photos, we'll show you the photos that you might have forgotten about. Or if you, they sent you a link, we'll show it in Apple News. Or we'll show, like, wherever you wherever it makes sense for you to access that thing, they'll show it to you. Rather than doing, like, some sort of in-app notification yeah. in messages or something, or, like, having you have to mark them as, like, view view later or something, 
it's it's a it's a very Apple way to do it, I guess. Um, whether uh, it's good or not, I don't know, but it definitely sounds like a very Apple solution. I would love a dashboard for all this stuff in one place, and I'd also love a way to pin certain things I want to make sure I look at later. Yeah, we'll we'll call it Pocket or no, 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 we can't call it <laughs> Pocket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually, that was my, when they first started uh, teasing this feature, like when they first started talking about it, um, I actually thought it was like going to be an expanded reading list feature where it was like all going to go into like, I don't know, the reading list was either going to get more full featured in Safari or is going to break out into its own app yeah. or something, but not, they didn't, they didn't do that. They didn't do that, but I, I'll definitely be using that. I mean, I guess it sounds like I won't have a choice unless I turn it off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start seeing those things around the system. And then next up is a huge one. Focus. This is big. Oh, and I've been yes. using it, and it's fantastic. Okay, so I, I probably need you to help me understand exactly how far this goes, because this looks like my yeah. dream of like having my home screen be one thing when I'm at home, and my notifications mm-hmm. being one thing while I'm at home, and then when I'm at work, Slack can notify me, and all that, like... Can I actually change my home screen with this, or is it yes. doesn't doesn't quite go? Th- oh no, really? So, and that's the main use I'm going to have for this. <sighs> that's exciting. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you can also have custom ones. So you have some predefined ones that you can set up, but also custom ones. So I have mm-hmm. one that's just entertainment, and it's my movie and TV streaming apps with PS4 remote play and some games, and has the huge TV widget for iPad. And it has the battery icon widget thing, so I know if my DualShock 4 is powered up enough. Mm-hmm. And when you, you can enable this in Control Center. And when you enable that, it hides all the other home screens from your iPad and shows you just that one. I wish you could have like a clean dock, a like barren dock uh, enabled, but it's just home screens. Okay. Uh, the other cool thing I was worried about is I thought you could only have the one app live on one home screen. So say if you had Safari in two... two uh, focuses is that allowed mm-hmm. and evidently you can now have a single app you know you can have t- on as many home screens as you want including you could have a whole home screen of like 10 safaris in the same home screen i don't know why you do that but you can have unlimited <laughs> icons safari mega app. fan obviously <laughs> right yeah so you can have <laughs> unlimited icons of the same app so that's huge because uh, otherwise this would not be as useful and yeah you can have it set by time or location automatically or you can just do it in the uh, control center and uh, one nice touch is the, the little icon representing the focus is displayed mm-hmm. as it would for do not disturb in the upper right so you can have a little gaming controller in your little menu bar and it's so adorable seeing it there oh yeah <laughs> okay so so the way it works is you, you those other home screens still exist you're just changing which ones are visible at the moment it hides them okay and you can do this with hidden home screens so my entertainment home screen is hidden from my main non-focused view and it mm-hmm. only shows up in view during that focus and when i'm not focused on anything it's hidden completely so you can do both okay um, which is nice so okay so now my natural question is do you know is there a way to automate these there is there's the location <sighs> and time ones and i'm pretty sure shortcuts integrates with this i'm gonna open the shortcuts app now and okay look for this. i believe it is in because yeah then obviously you're gonna set it based on okay when i get to my office building then because you could have a widget one. on your home screen for focus and you could just like Ooh. tap between yes there is a set focus and turn focus and it includes all your custom ones so turn and then has the focus one so i've turned podcasting on or off until you turn it off a time i leave event ends or ask each time so it is very customizable (sighs) and you could have on your main home screen so your main non-focused one so you could just have a bunch of those tiny little two by two icon things of change this focus that focus Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. okay well yeah this sounds great (laughs) It is awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. man, that's yeah. This I, is I've I've been hoping for this for years. So this this sounds like if it, if it works well and it, what you're describing sounds like it works pretty well, um, this is going to be a killer feature for me. So and the focus does sync between your different devices. Home screens do not sync. So. You can either yep. have it where the iPad's doing the home screen change, your iPhone doesn't, or your iPhone can also change home screens, but you have to pick out a different home screen and set that up if you want to. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. So I can. So if I make a work profile or a focus mode on my iPhone, I can make all the changes there, and then on my iPad, it will still it will do like all the things it can do. It sounds like so it'll yep. like change my notification settings and everything, but it won't change my home screens. I'll have to actually go into the right. Yeah, you have to set your home that screen. focus mode on. 
yeah, on the iPad and then change my home screens there. And Which then makes sense because you probably want different apps for different devices. Like. Yep. And then, yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't even mention that. Yeah, you set which apps allow you to notify you and which people can notify you. So that's pretty handy. I wish there was a mode in Focus to just allow normal notifications and people because I'm going to use this mainly just for home screen updating for me personally. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And then uh, I should mention in beta one, the home screen is very buggy. It will uh, <laughs> often uh, show a bunch of home screens you previously deleted. It is just it, hopefully beta two makes the home screen less buggy. So right now it is a bit buggy on the home to be ex- to be expected, I suppose. It's beta one. We're in a we're in danger danger yeah. town right now. But overall, it's very stable first beta, I should say. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> and this kind of uh, yeah uh, kind of combines old features of like do not disturb while driving and sleep mode, and it kind of like makes us a nice clean place all in one area mm-hmm. yeah i suppose like w- driving is one of your focus or one of your focus modes yeah, then it is yeah okay huh well this is all just kind of makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah i'm yeah i'm looking forward to doing lots of customizations here because yeah i set up one just to test it out it's like oh it's pretty cool this will be very powerful yeah because you also have the widgets you can have different focuses of widgets which is really cool you could have like a, d- a button to switch between widget groups pretty easily as well mm-hmm Oh, this is really nice. Yeah. Okay. My my wheels are turning so hard right now. Like I want to set up an automation to like, <laughs> like I want work and home obviously. And then I want like end of the night, like yeah. take off all of my social media things like at nine o'clock or something. I use, uh, I actually, I, I do some like, um, tracking stuff and air table every night. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't have it on my home screen cause I only use it for like two minutes every single day, but um, so I just searchlight it or spotlight it every single time. Um, I could just throw a home screen that has the app that I need to use. Yeah. And if there's an <sighs> app you only yeah. use for writing or something and you want to change focus to something, you could have it when you open this app, set the focus to this automatically. And then when you go to the home screen, you won't be tempted mm-hmm. to go elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this sounds really cool. I feel like I've tried to hack this together, like with my home screens previously, where like I would try like widget stacks to like have like my like like fantastical calendar for work up there but i don't need that when i'm at home so i'm gonna like flip another one on there but i have to manually do that and like i've got some work-ish apps on my home screen not too many but like some and oh yeah this sounds really nice just to be able to make like exactly the home screen i want with none of the junk and then when i do have to have the junk up there it's all junk (laughs) it's all (laughs) it's all work stuff that's gonna annoy me but yeah (laughs) yeah and uh this is something i will be spending a lot of time (laughs) kind of perfecting this this will be a time sink in and of itself trying to experiment with this it'll be fun yeah mm. this oh man yeah so this, this is a of course an ipad os but this was just on the phone is where they talked about this but i think this is gonna be even more powerful on the ipad for me at least mm-hmm. uh the next thing in the ios uh, 15 live text basically system-wide ocr on every mm-hmm. image across the anything which is yep. bonkers that this is a thing i remember like in the old days of the mac i devin think and it was like a processor hungry thing to try to do this kind of tech yeah absolutely this is um uh google launched this in google photos a year ago i think um i think this was the last year thing and like they do it's, it's basically all the same things that they showed here and it's it, it freaking rocks like it's yeah. such a nice feature like I, I took a picture of my driver or uh, my uh, license plate on my car one time because I can never remember what my license plate is. I should just write it in a note, but I, I, I use a photo to get it. And I always have to search for it. And like Apple Photos never knows what license plate is. So I just mm-hmm. return zero results. <laughs> um, and now I, I know the first like two letters. And so I could just type those two letters in and I assume it'll just come up. Yeah. Which is awesome. Like that's a stupid use case, but like it's a real use case. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess it works in the camera. Even if before you take a photo, you can just like in the live view on the camera app, copy text out of there. Mm-hmm. So this, yeah, and this is all the spotlight searchable and stuff. And there's a photo search and more richer results in spotlight for famous people and contacts. And mm-hmm. oh my god, yeah, I just I have it installed in my iPhone, um, and I just took a picture or I brought up the camera app, pointed it at a book, and I'm able to do a Google search for that book just by looking at the spine. And when you take a screenshot, there's a new like button for like <laughs> finding all the text. Basically. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh boy. Oh no, it's actually totally borked on the iPhone. Nope, oh, there it, it is. Okay. It took a second, but yeah, totally OCR'd everything, even in pictures on the screen. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, no, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's apps that you pay them money to unlock OCR functionality. So uh, mm-hmm. there's that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean that that that's that does suck, but it is nice to have it built into the system. Yep, it should be built in the system. This is great. And then um, photo memories are better. It's paired with Apple Music. I don't have much to say there. Um, I actually I think that's a dark horse really cool feature. Uh, the memories videos that they make like they're not always perfect, but they they're pretty darn good. A lot of the time, especially if you just tweak, like if it's too long or something, I feel like they're always too long, um, but you can tweak them a little bit. And like the stuff they showed with like having it sync to the beat of the song, even if you like pause it for a second, it'll like get back on tempo. I I think that looks really cool. Like that, I think is a... Yeah, this is something we spent hours on in iMovie and a while ago trying to make just perfect. And now it's just... Here you go, and you can kind of make tweaks. Yeah, yeah, that is annoying. Like I'm, I'm going to slave away in Final Cut for like trying to figure out like exactly when to edit a thing, and this thing's just like going through my photos and making <laughs> perfectly fine videos yep. all on its own. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I do watch these every now and then, and it's getting even better. So that's that's good. Um, mm-hmm. Wallets. Yeah. I've always been a fan of Passport mm. and wallets, and this continuing evolution of getting rid of everything except my phone and watch and they're getting yep. a big step further with house keys corporate badges and hotel keys and i had a, an applaud uh, i like yelped and joy f- that state ids <laughs> like driver's license in certain states i would love to yeah, see in that certain list states i states. keep looking for that list too <laughs> and it'll be tsa accepted as well so you could fly and not have your physical id yeah i'm i love the wallet demos at wwc because it's always a demo of showing things that i'm going to have in like five to ten years <laughs> <laughs> it's technically there today it's like which state do i need to move to to get this here yeah it's not in your state it's in a hundred thousand dollar car but one day <laughs> it will be you too <laughs> it's like okay let's all move to wyoming because they have this uh, functionality <laughs> exactly is it worth it <laughs> uh, maybe uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no that that looks totally cool um the like getting into your house with your phone um your car of course uh i'm actually literally yeah, and the apple watch will be getting ultra wideband car keys as well yes yeah which is actually even better right like just that yeah you don't need your phone just just walk in the house with your watch on you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i'm uh i was kind of hoping i i'm assuming this won't work but um coincidentally i next week will be going back into the office for the first time and i'm getting an id card to get into our new building and i was really hoping i don't think this is the case but i would really love it if i could just like tap my nfc card to the iPhone and have the iPhone just do it. That'd be I assume great. that won't work. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It probably is an app thing that you need to like register. It probably has to be yeah registered by whoever. It, a security the card. thing, right? Because then anyone could just steal your ID for a second. Yeah, I suppose they could. <laughs> but it would be so convenient. It would be. I love that. <laughs> you, yeah, you should talk to your uh, IT person to get get on this here. Yes, and they're going to be like, no, we we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited. The wallet is one of my favorite things that they've added over the years. It just makes my life so much better. Like my gas station, I can just tap my watch to the gas station. I hadn't had to stick a card in there in months. Mm-hmm. Yep, same same with the ones around me. It makes me a little sad um, because I don't have a lot of like jewelry or anything or like accessories. And like my watch is an Apple watch. So that's not really, that's an Apple thing too. It's a tech thing. Right. Like my wallet is like the one non-tech thing that I carry on me all the time and now it's like oh just throw it in your phone you don't even need that and i was like oh but i kind of like the wallet (laughs) (laughs) that's why you need a thousand different bands Uh. (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah 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 that'll 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 scratch that itch i suppose (laughs) the weather app is better there's no weather kit which makes me really sad because dark sky is shutting down i was hoping that might be a thing but i haven't heard anything about that but it looks great. Better graphics, more data. It looks like an app that you can actually use finally versus needing to use a third party. Yep. Yeah, the 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 app is 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 nice. Um I'm probably going to stick with Carrot Weather uh just cuz I like the customization and notifications and all that stuff. Yeah. Um but like the weather app itself looks gorgeous. Like it looks so so good. Like they've always had the weather effects, but I think they were static and there was like animated rain or whatever. But like now it's all I can't tell for sure, but it looks like they're 2D like clouds and s- stuff, and they but they move on screen. It's all like it's all animated. It looks like 
way nicer than it needs to, <laughs> which is, uh, again, kind of the Apple way. But it's it's so nice to just kind of like throw it up. It's raining where I am right now. And I'm just looking at the clouds kind of slowly move across the sky. It looks like there's some parallax to like make them look fancy. Super nice. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I really like this. And it has the uh, the next hour of rain thing that Dark Sky has. So they're using something at least still. <laughs> yeah. And then Apple Maps. This looks super impressive. It kind of looked like the redesign looked like a 3D like video game world that they made for the whole mm-hmm. planet. It like it was just super impressive the vis- visual overhaul. Yeah, and then when they went to dark mode, I was like, oh, that looks nice. <laughs> yeah, they should now, open this up as like an API for game developers to build games within here. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's basically what uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is. That's yeah. uh, that's big maps just with some photo. Uh, photogrammetry data yeah. from cities and, and it's not trying to be like a photorealistic real world it's like a cartoony version of life it's like a more fun mm-hmm. version of the world yeah no I, I think it's super rad um I, I i think apple is doing a great job with the ui for apple maps like i prefer the ui over google maps um the one thing that i i, I, I always the, the one thing that makes me kind of not just absolutely adore this and like just jump up in my seat and like start clapping in my house is um, I'd really love it if I just tapped on a business around me and got more information about them mm. <laughs> or like didn't have to install the Yelp app to see the photos in more yeah, detail. Or you want to read the full review at Yankshin. Yeah. I guess that's the deal yeah. they had to do. Otherwise Yelp wouldn't give them any. Info. I suppose. But yeah, I mean, th- it's a little stuff like that that I kind of want to see them improve as well. But hey, I mean, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Like the detailed roads that show the lanes, like they do the lane guidance already, but yeah. like to actually see the lanes, bike um, lanes, I'm sure that's overhead take... stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I, w- I want to try that out and see how much of that is available to me out here in the Illinois suburbs, but or Chicago suburbs. Yeah. Uh, I assume very little of it so far, but it'll get here eventually. Yeah. And then AirPods, we always we already talked about, uh, that conversation boost uh, announced notifications will be a thing i have this enabled for only like a couple people for when i messages come in mm-hmm. and i'm not sure what apps i'd want this for but i there might be one that i enable this for yeah i i use it for messages now and i really like it i'm not sure what apps i would find so essential that i would want their notifications read to me <laughs> But I, I suppose like, you know, um, another other messaging apps. Yeah, would I know, work. maybe the parcel app. It's like, oh, my package is delivered. But even then, probably. Yeah. Uh, the cool yeah. thing is uh, the Find My has been updated for this. They're basically treated as air tags now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah, that's that's right. So they don't do the crazy like arrow thing to get you there, but they do give you kind of like a distance. Yeah, they give you distance. You can beep them in or in or out of the case, both for the Macs and the Pros. And yeah, it'll do the thing where it'll talk to the network of the billion iPhones in the world to update the map. So that's the cool thing. It's in the Find My Network, just like um, the AirTags are. So, and I guess it'll work in or out of the case. So if you lose just a single AirPod, maybe you can find that now, as long as the battery yeah. lives for the ten hours. It's out of the case. Yes, as long as there's some some battery there. <laughs> Somehow your your iPhone will also like show up on the Find My Network even if it's off. Like that's going to work now. Oh, I, th- I think previously the phone had to be on, but even if it's off now, it'll still hit the the Find My Network it's like and a low you'll power still be able thing. to access it. It must be, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because there's that mode for transit when it's like dead. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And um, I got so excited for this next announcement regarding AirPods. Uh, I, it was another Yelp moment where I screamed out a little bit. <laughs> Spatial audio for TV OS is coming this fall. Mm, and that's something mm, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, they add this new this new Apple TV hardware for spatial audio. And I guess it's going to come to at least all the 4Ks and maybe the HD where it, it's just like, here it is. It, it works now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I saw, oh, I'm trying to remember Apple's, they they do those like feature graphs graphics at the end of every segment. Um, I think it specified the 4K for the spatial audio. Okay. I could be wrong. Yeah, that makes sense, though, because that's where the Dolby Atmos HomePods are required as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah, you're actually right. It was the HomePods that I was thinking of. So maybe this will work with everything. But yeah, I'm so happy about this. Like, I remember um, I was watching The Mandalorian Season 2 when spatial audio came out, and I wanted to enjoy spatial audio with the mandalorian because it was supposed to be great yeah. um and it was but i had to watch on my ipad i couldn't watch on my apple tv because the apple tv didn't support it and so this is really really great to just have this feature available um on the best biggest screen in the house rather than yeah. having to go to your mobile device or use an hdmi adapter to plug into a tv and not use your apple tv <laughs> i've done uh. that before just to try it out <laughs> 
<laughs> bizarre. That is that is a workaround. <laughs> yeah, but this is yeah, it's great because at night, you know, there might be people that are sleeping, and you can watch something at good volume and yeah. surround sound. It's mm-hmm. Great. mm-hmm. And for most people, I'd say headphones, it's a better experience than speakers are, you you know. Yeah, that's that's probably true. This did actually, this is the first thing that's gotten me to think, hmm, maybe I could get AirPods Max. Like, I for the, the whole existence that they've had so far, I've been like, I have no need for those. I've got Sony over the years. They're great. They're f- totally fine. But they don't do this. <laughs> they do not. <laughs> so, so now I'm, yeah, tempted. So, yeah, I um for my birthday, which was over the weekend, I got AirPod Max as my big uh, gift hey, this year. Hey, nice. Yeah. yeah, and they are amazing. Um, I, I'm upgrading with the Beat Studio 3s. And okay. Those are also, you know, Apple chip ones where it uses the AirPod technology. Yep. And these are just so much nicer. The the, the, the thing where headphones bend to fold away mm-hmm. is uh, I've had multiple instances meaning to buy headbands over and over again because it keeps breaking at that point. So I understand mm. them not bending because uh, I've experienced headphones breaking quite easily. So uh, <laughs> I do appreciate their build and you know, rigidity and all that. And they sound great. I've only used them today to listen to like Apple's keynote and a couple things on music. But um, yeah, I'm impressed uh, so far. They, they feel very light on my head and very comfortable overall. So that that's always a concern with headphones. Are they going to be clamping too tight or whatever? And they, they felt great in my head. So and uh, just FYI, for those that are curious, a Best Buy is running a sale or not a sale. Their open box excellent uh, ones are 467 and they're basically brand new. So you can get a substantial like 15% discount going that route you know i I did not think i would lose money coming onto this podcast today but uh (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) this is uh this is tempting (laughs) yeah the yeah it's basically people that return them within 14 days and basically didn't use them they did probably didn't feel good on their head or something um Mm -hmm. yeah all right well that'll be a temptation i'll have to grapple with (laughs) later (laughs) anyways um, I think it's time for iPad OS. Let's do it. Okay. So this was a rather quick section of the keynote. I could have enjoyed more of them talking about other new things, but we did get a lot. First off, we have caught up with the iPhone. We have widgets anywhere, just like the iPhone, but mm-hmm. uh, they have larger formats for iPad, which are very large. I've got one um, on one of my screens, and it like takes up... So it takes up basically a third of your screen as a huge widget, and it's pretty Man. awesome. Okay. So you can have two of these, you can have basically two of these huge widgets, and then you would have room for eight app icons to the right. Okay. Oof. You can do some cool things in that space, and I'm excited to see what developers Is there an Apple one you're using right now that's that you're liking? The uh, TV app uh, is the one I've, I'm using it with. Okay. I'll show you what's up next. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I kind of liked the um, the files app that they showed, like kind of showing recently accessed documents. And I think in playing around, I think you can drag files from that widget i think Ooh, i'm pretty sure Ooh, can you okay that would be new that'd be new widget functionality i'm, I'm pretty sure widgets couldn't do that before let me add one to my home screen just <laughs> right now just to see i was playing around with it earlier but i want to verify here added this widget drop it yeah i totally dragged oh a God. file into spark <laughs> from the home screen huh. wow so that's like a little desktop on your I- ipad home screen like it's just a drop spot for files <laughs> yeah it's not I'm, I'm trying it again with a different th- yeah it worked i dragged a 561 huh. megabyte wave file from the desktop on ipad to the mail app and it's in my email as a 561 megabyte attachment now well that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah i think i might actually use this widget now because yeah that'll be handy so we now have desktop that- on ipad basically. sweet well done well done, Apple. And I believe this widget, the files widget, is one of those. Yeah, it is. It's one of the ones that can take up like a third of your screen. Hmm. And can you assign it to a folder? Like I want to see my downloads folder on this, not just like recent files. Yeah, so if I edit the widget, you mm-hmm. can choose location and it uh, recent uh, downloads. Yeah. And you can choose literally any folder. You could have, <laughs> you could have a bunch of these files widgets and just have your entire file system on your home screen <laughs> Drag well it. this is interesting <laughs> that's cool that's really cool yeah huh hmm. yeah that's cool uh, i'm not gonna lie that makes me want to use that widget more i feel like this is i feel like they should have showed something like this off in the keynote like i know they're going for a general audience and maybe they don't care about this necessarily but like that is such a cool thing and I feel like one of the, I've only been on Twitter a little bit after the keynote today, but one of the 
impressions I'm getting from people is that there's tons of cool stuff in these releases that they didn't even discuss on stage. Um, we'll get to this with watchOS, I'm sure. Yeah. But like, there's just like these really cool features that are either like they're fixing paper cuts that there just were in the, using the system or like they're pretty substantial updates that are super cool. And but they didn't say a word about them. Nope. And like we're discovering these things like I was I, I was more excited listening to you move a file <laughs> <laughs> from just imagining what that was like than I was for a good portion of the iPad portion of this uh, <laughs> keynote. Yeah. Which is crazy. Okay, I should preface this. So when they introduced the iPad OS section of the keynote, mm-hmm. they ramped it up saying it's great as a tablet. It's great with a keyboard and now a yeah. trackpad. And I was totally expecting to say it's now great with the monitor, the external monitor, because yeah. it's the totally chameleon versatile mm-hmm. machine. And instead they pivoted the widgets. I, I I didn't think that was a good connection point, but that's yeah. where they pivoted. I was I wouldn't be a- as angry about no external monitor support if they didn't do this <laughs> intro that uh, was all about iPad versatility. I think the the thing about this that kind of made people disappointed, I think, um, it made me disappointed a little bit, um, is that we've all kind of come into this update with an expectation of like what we expect or what we really want to see in the iPad. And like one of those things is external monitor support. And, you know, there's been all this conversation about what's the M1 chip for? It's got to be for something. <laughs> yep. And we've all kind of built up this release to like, well, this is going to have something that's going to make the like 16 gigs of RAM and the M1 chip all of a sudden make sense. And like, like you said, when they started to intro it with, it works great here and here and here and... <laughs> Nope, That's widgets the are, point are cool. For now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like widgets are cool. Like I'm, you're, you're, you won't hear me say a bad thing about widgets. Oh, they're but, great. <laughs> but they're but totally expected for this reason. Exactly, exactly. Like it would have been shocking if there weren't widgets on the home screen. So yeah, I, I, I think that this this iPad really had a lot of baggage with people just having expectations that were very specific. It wasn't just like we want the iPad to be better. We like want it to be better in this exact way. Yeah, um, that's the only feature that I was just like. It's coming this year, right? And it might still come like trackpad at the very end of 15 as a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always, I mean, what are we on, like 14.7 or something? Like, so they're 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 not afraid to do those updates. Into, and as uh, we'll talk about, the multitasking stuff is going to be great when they do external monitor because it's not a touch first thing. And this will be great there. Or mm-hmm. I should say it is a touch first thing, but it's also great with uh, trackpad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the multitasking, I think, is I, I really need to get hands on with it. And maybe you can yeah. share some shed some light on it. But like, it's one of those things where I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, this is either going to be awesome and it's really going to help the discoverability of multitasking or we're just going to have the same conversation with people who just don't get the iPad and are like, it's completely impossible to understand. Nobody knows how to multitask on it. And we're like, we, you, you can do it. No, we'll get <laughs> it's to not it. That hard. It's, it's good. And it okay. weighs that a lot of people have been complaining about uh, awesome. So you'll get to it. But yeah, uh, as for, far as external monitors, this would work great in that system, I think. Yeah, with external monitors, I'm not sure if they'll eventually do it where there's more free-flowing windows. That's kind of one hope people have. So yeah, I'm not sure what they'll end up doing there. Mm-hmm. But it's not there yeah. yet, which is a disappointment. But yeah, even though it's not there yet, it feels like the pieces, like there's more and more like window-ish stuff in iPad OS, even the iPhone. Like the quick note feature, that yeah. you can just kind of like pull up from the bottom corner and like bring up a note like like that is a window that is a window in mm-hmm. iPad OS. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's another app running on top of whatever app you're using and they interact nicely and everything but like that's a window my dude uh yes, so <laughs> that is definitely an interesting thing like that thing they showed with the mail app like you can open a mail window on top of your mail on one side of the screen and whatever app was on the right side like there's some window-ish stuff and like it, it feels like that maybe they're building up to something, um, but maybe I'm just getting my hopes up for the thing that we thought was going to be there this time and wasn't and maybe never will. But they're definitely doing some window-ish things um, in an ipad way. Right. And something I just want to bring up now, they talked about universal control in the Mac section of the keynote, and mm-hmm. my brain eventually went to... So this works with three devices, and it shares a trackpad and keyboard between up to three devices... I was wondering, could you have two iPads, uh, a Magic Keyboard hooked up to one iPad, and have a secondary iPad that you drag the trackpad mm. over to and keyboard over to, and you now have kind of a fake external monitor as a second iPad up there? Uh-huh. I need, oh, I, I, I'm kind of tempted to install a beta on my other iPad Pro, my 10.5 uh-huh. inch, and just see if that works. 
Oh, that's interesting. Because they didn't specify Mac to iPad or iPad to Mac. They only showed it Mac to iPad and vice versa. To Mac. Yeah. yeah. But I'm curious, iPad to iPad or <laughs> iPad to Mac? I don't know. Yeah. It, I, that was a very weird thing. I was like, I'm not quite sure what the use case is that I would use this. The thing that I thought they were going to do, and this is, again, them kind of like inching up to that line. I thought they were going to be like, and not, now that your mouse can move between them, and I'm going to drag this window from a Mac app. I'm going to drag the whole window over to the iPad, and this app's on the iPad running in the <laughs> same state and everything. Um, but just the mouse and the file moved Yeah, they over. did uh, content, so you could files and stuff would yep. drag over, which that's really cool. And if that worked on iPad, that'd be really cool being able to dra- drag a file from one app on your iPad to another app on a different iPad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It, I, I, it seems like there's no reason it couldn't work, but who knows? Yeah, I, that, I definitely have to try it out. I don't have the hardware to... I'm a, I'm a single iPad guy, so I don't... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'll have to look at the documentation and then maybe one day when I have a bunch of free time to install a beta and then revert to the previous OS <laughs> to do that because I, I want at least one device on the stable OS. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I sympathize with that. <laughs> yeah. And then um, next up was App Library. That's now an iPad, and it's sort of the same as iPhone, but not really. So it's still on the right, but mm-hmm. it's also in the dock. And it really lives in the dock. And there's an animation when you go to that right screen, it kind of zooms up from the dock as like you're opening the dock thing. Mm-hmm. So it lives okay. in the dock, but as you swipe to the right, it kind of opens. Okay. It. And so you can't remove it from the dock, I'm guessing, then. Um, I am trying to If this uninstalls all of your apps, then I do apologize. <laughs> no, there's no way. It does not let you do anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you can't even long tap to do any special custom commands. That's gotcha. Worth. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is literally the Android app drawer at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's at the bottom of your screen. You tap it. You see all your apps. It goes away. And it, look, it looks really fast. nice. It, yeah, that animation looks so good. Where they all it's super pop fast. Up. Everything's organized nice and neat. You can search really easily for your apps. It's alphabeticalized there. Mm-hmm. In the alphabetical list, you see download icons and download apps you don't have installed right now. Okay. No way, no way to customize the folders still? No I'm way guessing. to customize still. Yeah. That's, that's the Achilles heel, I think, of that screen. Like, I never know what folder to go into. Yeah. Most of them, I'm just searching. But yeah. I like, where's, where's my email? It's, yeah. Like, I think my email app is in. For the multitasking stuff, it'd be handy to have more custom. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would, it's, 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 I don't like their logic, I guess, <laughs> for where apps should right. go. So I, I would love to put my own on there or just show me that, like, alphabetical list as, like, a grid, maybe. But again, we're kind of getting back into just inventing, reinventing the Android launcher but maybe they had it right who knows yeah <laughs> google gets some things right so uh, the big thing this year i think is multitask they so one complaint i've heard over and over again on podcasts that want the ipad to be an ipad still and be an ipad fully featured without a keyboard mm-hmm. and trackpad is that multitasking requires a keyboard to open up spotlight to get to that second app and that is yeah. a real thing and that is now solved the ipad is fully featured and can be used as a power user wants to use it based for multitasking purposes at least in tablet mode there's this new app there's this new icon that lives on every single app whether they're updated or not to <laughs> include uh these three icons one is a big screen that just closes whatever split screen you're in uh the second one will uh kind of open up a split screen instance where it kind of pushes to the side you're the app you're in now and brings you to the home screen where you can pull up the app library and play around with your iPad's home screen to find what app you want. And all you do, you don't drag, you just tap on an app. And when you do that, it adds it to the the um, you know the split screen. And you can, like you did before, uh, just grab the top middle to change which app is on either side. And then the third option is it will change the app that you select this in into a slide over app and it'll just put that slide over and this app you were split screen with will become the full screen app so that's kind of what's in that menu bar there and super great that you can now multitask without um a keyboard yeah i i I definitely think that is super good because i on my ipad without a keyboard installed because i do use it sometimes without a keyboard um and you know it's just nice to use it as a tablet as well and i wanted to do some split screen and i couldn't do it because the app that I wanted to split screen was on my home screen. I could only access my dock to get those apps into split screens. So it, it was a pain. And if um, you're in LumaFusion doing export, you're stuck. Yeah, you're, you're stuck, <laughs> which is another problem I wish they would have solved, but they didn't. But at um, least now but... you're not stuck. You can, in tablet mode, in LumaFusion, find whatever app you want to you know, use and get to it without closing your export. 
Exactly. Yeah. So that that's definitely an improvement. And uh, the other thing is this new shelf, which is great. So before in iPad OS 13 and 14, you have all these multiple app windows of the same app. So you have like 10 instances of Safari open. You kind of forget they're open. They're open. And you yep. have all this clutter on your multitasking switcher thing. Now when you open an app that has multiple windows open, it'll show you many little windows in the shelf beneath. And you can tap which one you want. It'll kind of show you a big window of the default one that it was going to go to. And if you tap on that main window, it'll stay in the main window. But if you don't tap anything, it'll just show you the shelf until you tap on something. And you can just select one of the shelf things there. And you can also you know, flick the little mini windows away to close them so you can do better window management by just getting rid of things that you forgot were even open. So it, mm-hmm. I think it'll help with that as well. Yeah, I think the shelf thing, like I, I don't really struggle with the getting apps side by side, but the shelf thing that really resonated with me. Like, ooh, that solves an absolute problem that I have uh, where, like you said, like you pair two apps together and you forget about it or you op- you had a second Safari open and you're like, wait, where did that go? And you like open Safari and it's not there. And you're like, but I just opened Safari. Why can't I see the web page that I had open in Safari? <laughs> and it's just because it was further back in my history. So this, I, I, I think this this totally makes sense. This is uh, this this is a slam dunk in my opinion. Yeah, and the other uh, cool thing is there is in your multitasking view when you slide up the splits uh, the slide over apps are to the right. So there's little iPhone sized class apps that you can see all your slide over apps and kind of close those if you want to or select one and it'll pull it up as the current slide over app and that's also super handy that's right because you can have multiple slide overs and like switch between them yep yeah i always forget that exists like i've never figured out that ui that's actually the most confusing ui to me <laughs> yeah, totally. um, but yeah i mean that 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 seem seems good too they solved another another problem with multitasking so it, it sounds like they didn't expand it a ton they just refined what was there although i guess they did expand some with the quick notes and the um like windows on top like in the middle of screens and stuff right but. yeah and there's a weird icon i'm not quite sure what it means yet in the multitasking view there's like a double window icon thingy so there's some stuff i still need to learn about all the intricacies of this okay but it's, it sounds like a definite win overall from what your usage yeah much better than what we had before nice and yeah as i said uh, yeah this works in tablet mode now uh, the thing that, uh, if you are a keyboard person, that got so much better because all this multitasking stuff is now driven completely with the keyboard now. So there's a new, they built on the system wide keyboard stuff by using that globe key that was kind of useless for most people. And the globe key now kind of functions as the system wide shortcut key. So before you would use like command H to go home, that shortcut still works, but I'm not sure if it will long term. But the globe key is the, you know, globe H or globe a to show the doc uh globe q to do a quick note globe s to do siri globe c to do control center or the app switcher uh globe up go to the next app globe to the right so i believe you can basically control the whole ui including which apps to go in the multitasking view via the keyboard and if you do the little um thing where you select a new app to go into the multitasking uh, where it takes you to the home screen Uh, You can also um, use your keyboard in that instance. (laughs) Okay, so yeah, I am at the home screen and I can just use my arrow key to select which app I want to pick and I hit enter and it'll open that app and it even works with widgets. So I went to the carrot weather widget, I hit enter and I opened carrot weather as one of the split view. So you can use the widgets in that as a way to get into an app in that multitasking method. And you can navigate the whole UI with keyboard now, because you can hit tab to go between different sections. So say if you're in the mail app, you can hit tab and it'll bring you, so uh, it'll br- so you can arrow up and down. So with the full view between all your mailboxes, I hit tab and then it brings me to the search. Hit tab again, it brings me to the list of mail uh, messages and you can basically get around the whole UI of the iPad now entirely with keyboard. I mean, this is just, if you had told someone two years ago that a mouse and keyboard could drive an iPad entirely, or a keyboard even could drive the <laughs> right. iPad entirely, like, they they wouldn't believe you. They'd probably yell at you for being insane. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that, I mean, this... Uh, this is something I feel that like, uh, the things that put a ton of work into making their app 
work with the keyboard and now every app gets yeah. it for free mm-hmm. well you know what we all bought things and uh i guess they are doing okay so are. yeah <laughs> i guess that's fine but yeah i mean i feel i feel like I, this is nothing but good news um for ipad users in general with like power users like if i i i can already envision myself like i i after this podcast is over i'm definitely installing the beta on the ipad i'm recording into right now <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to try this out. So the sad thing is, my external Bluetooth keyboard does not have a globe key; it has a function key. I don't. Mm-hmm. I haven't found a way to reprogram that. I, there might be, but I may need to get a different external mm. Bluetooth keyboard that has that globe key. Get, get one of those colorful new iMac ones. Magic right? Keyboards. Yeah. Go on eBay, <laughs> and they'll be wildly expensive. Yeah. Oh God, I can't even imagine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then Safari extensions they announced are coming to the iPad. Though they announced this during the Mac part, but this is huge. We now. Have browser extensions on iPad. So yep. I'm trying to imagine. I don't use extensions because I haven't been on the Mac for a while. But what kind of things <laughs> uh, can you imagine up for this? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what the limitations are going to be. But there are, I mean, I use a couple extensions. I use an extension that takes a screenshot of the website I'm on, like the full page. Um, I use uh, Pocket to save to Pocket. Um, I use 1Password. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because 1Password has that kind of integration already. So it's going to carry some of the things yeah. we kind of had iPad solutions for already. But yeah, uh, there's got to be some cool stuff developers will think of. Yeah, I, I think the thing that I'm really excited about this is that Apple updated Safari to support web extensions, which is a web standard way to do browser extensions last year and like the hope was that all the like makers of chrome extensions mainly is who we're talking about here those developers would like convert their extensions over to this web extensions thing and then suddenly safari would have all these new extensions uh because safari's extension library has always been pretty paltry and that didn't happen like i think a couple did but like in general you're not going to get the library even close to what you can get on Chrome. And so hopefully now that iOS supports it, that's a bigger market and is going to Yeah, convince... iPhone users. You have the whole iPhone user base. Right. And you can yeah, charge like, them. I think these will be in the mm-hmm. app store and you can charge them money for it. Yeah, that's that's my question too, is how do you install them? Like, do you have to install through the app store? I guess I assume you do because it's an I- Apple thing. Probably. But like m- most extensions, you just click a link and it downloads a little file to your computer and yeah. then that like that like the browser detects that's an extension and says, Oh, would you like me to enable this? And you just say yes and then it's there, but this might have to go through the app store, which would be kind of a shame and would actually undo a lot of the momentum that we might have had. Right. Well, maybe put a pin in that one maybe. Yeah. I'm <laughs> and curious. See the details. Yeah. Are there audio recording protocols that you could do over Safari with an extension maybe? I don't know. Yeah. I mean like YouTubers have like TubeBuddy as an extension that like exists. I guess that's only for Chrome and Firefox as well, but um like you could bring that over, but like would that have to be an app? Uh the App Store makes things weird. <laughs> yep, it does. But yeah, I'm curious to see what happens. This will be something with wait till the fall to see what really happens. Yeah. For sure. Notes app. Major additions here. Uh, tagging is a big thing in this Notes app now. And mm-hmm. that's kind of a... I wonder if there will be tagging elsewhere in the system. But, you know, tag, you mention people. There's an activity view for shared notes. And there's this quick note thing that I think is going to be killer. It's, it's separated from your main note. And there's a keyboard shortcut, Globe Q, to do a quick note. Or you can use the Apple Pencil. If you're watching a video in picture in picture, I was watching the developer say the union. It allowed me to link to that video that was playing just in picture in picture uh, when I was on the home screen. And I could link to that and I could add notes either written or typed. And, uh, you know, this will, I think this will make me use the notes app finally because this is some <laughs> major additions here for just like note taking. And I kind of wonder if third parties will be able to grab the quick notes in any way to make kind of a third party mm. way to use this data you're capturing from notes if you don't want to live there yeah i don't know that would be kind of cool the thing that i started thinking when i saw like you mentioned the tagging and everything and like the tracking changes and everything um which i guess has been there a little bit in notes this is starting to feel more like a google docs sort of thing yeah like even more than pages in a way <laughs> like <laughs> Totally. It, it, it's it's definitely not the same. It's not there yet in terms of functionality, but like I'm definitely getting those vibes of like we're all going to be working on this note and you're going to be able to like assign things to people and like tag them and put uh, like filters through your notes with hashtags and like 
It's it's turning into quite the powerhouse. I think it was I was at iOS nine where like they did a whole revamp of notes and everyone was like, oh, notes is good all of a sudden, and like I feel like that train has been just plowing forward for a couple of years now for I guess six years. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's getting better, and uh, the printing dialog box has got a major overhaul as well. I should just mention. Oh, interesting. I I use it every once in a while, and it's just. This is very basic. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to see. Yeah, you can still pinch in to do the PDF export. So they did not take that away. Nice. So that's notes. Yeah, I've never really used the lock screen note thing, but this quick note thing, I no. think I may use yeah. quite a bit. Especially with the integrating into apps is like, yo, I'm at this website. Let me take a note of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it sounds like if you like come back to that website, it will show your, um, it'll show the note. It'll pop it up. So yeah. like you'll don't have to remember, oh, I took a note about this. Like, you'll just go to the website and you'll see it. Right, yeah. And then Translate, there's a new app for iPad. They brought this to iPhone last year. It looks pretty cool. There's Auto Translate. You can practice handwriting in the app. I'm not sure if it's just like Japanese or if you could also practice your English if you're young. Yeah, I, I wondered if that was just the Scribble feature. Or not Scribble, what, I forget what they call it on the iPad. It's where you scribble. just write into... It's Scribble, okay, yeah, where you just write into a text field. Like, I wonder, is it just literally that, and it's just It sounds like they're practicing that in your the handwriting, tra- so I'm not sure. What it, yeah. What it, I, gotta practice, I gotta try it out. You got some homework. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last thing they talked specifically about iPad was Swift Playgrounds, and this was a, a rather huge announcement, I should say. There's no Xcode. Yeah. But you can build mm-hmm. apps on iPad for the iPhone and iPad, and the, you can export this project to Xcode on Mac if you want to do more things that maybe you can't do in Swift Playgrounds. But you Mm -hmm. can submit apps to the App Store from the iPad using Swift Playgrounds in whatever APIs that are allowed in Swift Playgrounds. And I'm tempted. I've never written a line of code in my life. I'm tempted. Oh, this sounds like (laughs) a very junior way to start learning the very basics of like what it is to make an app. And maybe I can learn this in this very rudimentary Mm -hmm. way because programming has uh, gotten very complicated over the years. Maybe this is a good starting point for a a beginner like me. Yeah, this... (sighs) This could have been an entire 30 minute segment on its own. I feel like like I, I really like <laughs> it's a little crazy how casual they were about. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, that thing that like people put up as like a wall to like you can't say it's a computer until you can write programs for that yep. computer on itself. Yeah, we're enabling that. And not only that, like we're not, it's not like a shortcuts thing where it's just a local thing or you can like share it with someone like via message. Like you can upload it to the store and you can sell it. Right. Like, OK, that's a that seems like a big update. That's big. <laughs> that seems like a big deal. And yeah, I like I, I do know some Swift. I, I, I long long ago uh, had an app on the App Store for like a year, and I haven't done it since. But this is really tempting because Swift UI is really appealing. Uh, I'm definitely watching the session this week about like what's new in Swift UI. Uh, but it's pretty simple to get a basic UI going. I'm I really want to know what the where the walls are with yeah. this. Like how far can you go with it? Yeah, because Swift UI heard. ATP, it takes a very beefy Mac to like render that stuff. And I'm guessing mm-hmm. that won't be the case on the iPad here. I, I suppose not. I mean, maybe it'll take seven years to render on my uh, 2018 iPad Pro, but those M1s will do it fast. I'm so <laughs> curious if the app will be optimized for external displays to like preview the app externally in any way. Because app uh, developers can yeah. optimize for externals. I don't know if they'll do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... I, I think this is a big, big question mark, but I, I definitely want to play. I, I hope it's a, it's available. Well, because Swift Playgrounds is a it's an app an in the app. app store. I don't think it's in the beta yet. Uh, you might need like dang. I don't know. There might be a special way to get it later on yeah. in the summer. I don't think it's out yet. You probably need to know. Apple probably needs to let you in. Yeah, in the past, I remember like promo codes to download certain things in some beta cycles. So maybe there's some like or a test flight invite or something. I don't know. Maybe there's a different way about it or maybe they add it in a future beta yeah yeah i'm looking at the developer page and there is not a uh swift playgrounds beta right now so maybe not yet but that is oh man that is i think that's going to be a nice portal for people getting into development because like swift swift playgrounds is nice but it's really just a teaching tool yeah or has been at least it's like make this character move across the screen exactly exactly but like making an app is a whole different beast like you can understand the fundamentals of programming, but like actually making an iOS app is like a is a different thing. And so I'm curious how that jump is going to be. But Swift UI makes that easier, and just uh, it looks like this app is going to do like everything it can to help you at least yeah. understand what 
the things that you're trying to do, how they work. Uh, it, it, yeah, it seems crazy to me that this wasn't like a 30 minute segment <laughs> and they just extended the whole presentation. Yeah. I mean, maybe like as an example, I could build like an iPad Pros app for like, here's my podcast with like a little directory thing. I don't know. Just like as a test thing to see how it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I, want, I wonder if one of the sessions this week will be like someone making an app from start to finish in that. Oh boy. Playgrounds. I don't see any sessions for it though. Yeah. They talked about in the State of the Union a little bit. I, I was kind of glancing in and out. Okay. I, I missed that. So I didn't, didn't see, but it's super intriguing. Super intriguing. That's, that's, that's super. That, I mean, there's so many nice iPad announcements. Um, and I'm living vicariously through you right now as you enjoy them and I just enjoy them with you. <laughs> yeah. But that, I think that, it has the potential to be the most significant thing they they announced today for the it iPad. It does. Like kids growing up with iPads can now like write their basic apps and this will get better and better, more advanced over the years and maybe eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know when they stop calling it Swift Playgrounds or is it is it fine being a playground forever? Yeah. I feel like at some point they got to either break it off or yeah, change it and playgrounds is a feature inside the app. I don't right. know. I don't want a project I don't want a project roadmap for uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for Apple, but yeah, I, it definitely seems uh like this could be the the the, the first uh, branch in something really big for the iPad. Very much so. Yeah. And um I should mention shortcuts is coming to the Mac and alongside this there are shortcuts things for iPad that have been discovered. Can that my past retweets of Fatichi, he's been diving <laughs> into this stuff. Uh, that checks out. Yes, he has. Uh, files, you're going to be able to access any folder in the Files app. And you'll and just like in the Mac, there's now in the Files app, when you're copying large files, there'll be the little dialogue of how many seconds are left for that 100 gigabyte copy, which is nice. Oh, be still my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can have a shortcut now to open two apps side by side and split you on iPad. So... Um, so you're getting into writing mode. You can have a little thing on your home screen that says, open these two apps side by side, and it'll do that. Mm-hmm. Um, run automations based on satellite recognition and focus. So um, yeah, it sounds like there's some good stuff in the Shortcuts app for the uh, iPad, and it's also coming on the Mac, which is cool. Yep, nothing nothing but good news. Yeah, I I, I have I continue to have no complaints, it seems, with this update. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they said them. Shortcuts is the future of automation on the Mac, and they're kind of yeah. letting you import automator stuff into Shortcuts, which is cool, and... There, there's Apple Script shortcut things you can do in there. So it sounds like they, mm-hmm. they're doing a pretty good job there. Yeah, it sounds like Automator is not long for this world. No, I love but, Automator though. But, you could have it like oh, for sure. your mouse and like do stuff based on that, which is nifty. The next session they talked about was privacy and there's like basic local Siri. I need to rewatch this because I was still kind of getting over the iPad stuff at that time. So, <laughs> uh, but there's local Siri now, which is good for privacy and also speed. Yep. I, I swear I thought they had announced this years ago as well, that like Siri was doing some on-device stuff, but I apparently so not. Too. Yeah. Super, super weird. Google Assistant does this on Android. So uh, yeah. it, it is fantastic how fast it works. Yeah, I know there's like the open app thing that's all local, I thought. But maybe that's not Siri and it's a different system. Maybe they're kind of integrating them into one place versus just the accessibility features. Yeah. Like, is that voice commands rearing its head from yeah. the iOS 2 days or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so iCloud, you're able to add trusted people for recovery, which is great if someone doesn't remember their password. And also really huge is digital legacy program where if someone passes away, there's now a way to pass on that data, which is a huge problem that people are now realizing is an issue. Yeah, I, I, I think that's great. I don't often have to grapple with my own mortality in these Apple events. And I am uh, I don't know if I'm happy that I had to this time, but yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that they're thinking about it. And then uh, VPN app creators might be upset by the private relay service in iCloud Plus. iCloud Plus is basically any, if you pay for iCloud in any way, 50 gigabytes or more, you get iCloud Plus included with that. So iCloud yep. is now the five gigabytes free. And then iCloud Plus is anything you pay for. And this now includes Private Relay, basically kind of their own VPN, the ability to hide your email when signing up for services, unlimited home secure video cameras, and um, sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. That Private Relay, um, I might have misheard or misread, but it sounds like that's only for Safari. Yes, it's not I believe so. All traffic on your phone. Yep, I'm pretty but, sure that's the case. You know, still pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's got to cost Apple some money, so it's like let's just sure. do it Safari and not. <laughs> Netflix streaming or something. Yeah. I mean, this is obviously getting ready for iCloud++ coming. Well, I suppose uh, David Smith would have an issue with that. But oh, yeah. um, I- iCloud Super Plus uh, coming next year, which has it work in every single app and is built into your home pods, which are also Wi-Fi routers. 
but again, I'm dreaming a yep. little bit right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they had a whole like basically Home OS kind of section where the HomePod Minis can now be speakers for Apple TV. Um, they said that they sound amazing. I kind of doubt it compared to the regular HomePods they got rid of. <laughs> yep, same. Uh, <laughs> same reaction. Yep. Uh, Siri will be on third-party devices. That's kind of a cool little thing I didn't think would happen. That was a surprise. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. And then package detection on the camera. So if you have a doorbell camera and HomeKit, it can tell you if a package has been delivered. Mm-hmm. And nice. the tvOS basically has a really cool camera setup now. Yeah, so. and I think that might be the only update to tvOS they talked about. <laughs> and spatial audio. <laughs> Oh, and spatial audio. Which that's right, the only right. thing you really need. I mean, bring spatial audio on. That's, that, that's true. I'm, I'm mostly being snarky. TV, TVOS is fine. It yeah. doesn't need to do much more. <laughs> I get my new remote tomorrow. I'm very excited. Ooh, it yeah. It's it's pretty nice. Yeah. And then um, we're saving the watch for the watch for last, but uh, Monterey is the new name of the Mac OS. And the cool thing, you can AirPlay to the Mac from an iPad or iPhone. And, I, and this kind of kills the reflector app that I used for so many years. And I'm thinking I would love to be able to AirPlay from an iPhone to an iPad or an iPad to an iPad. So I'd, I want this expanded even further. Mm-hmm. So. Yep, that's the natural next step. Yeah, the the Mac update looked nice. The Safari uh, update looks pretty substantial. And I'm oh yeah, that's an iPad as well. The Safari UI is radically different. Yeah, so I'm I'm I definitely need to play with that UI a little bit because I'm not totally sold on it out yeah. of the gate. But maybe it's nice. It, it's it's a pretty dramatic departure though. It's it's a it's it's a pretty big change. It so is. When I'm gonna I'm gonna stew on it before I make any strong opinions. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot to say on Safari. I don't think we have time for it tonight. I've been playing a little bit with it. The phone's an even major, more major revamp, but. I do like the whole sidebar thing. They're embracing an iPad and Safari is now using the sidebar metaphor. Um, mm-hmm. And then they talked about developer things, new APIs. And we'll talk about one of those APIs in just a second that we're both very excited about. Uh, <laughs> A-B testing in the App Store, which is kind of interesting, different. Um, and then xCloud, Xcode Cloud, um, <laughs> which I think that could be a precursor to X- Xcode for iPad next year, perhaps. That, that could be a yeah. company used for that. I was wondering if that's where they were leading with this, was it was a web-based IDE for uh, app development, but apparently not. But it, it definitely, um, I don't do any development work myself, but I do testing and work with developers in my day job and we do an iOS app. And what they were saying sounds appealing and sounds like it would be easier for our workflow. So yeah, Xcode in the cloud or whatever they're calling it, um, definitely a cool new direction for them. Although it sounds like that's a paid service too. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure the way they described it was uh, this is not just going to be available for everyone. This is a paid thing, which makes sense. There's web or there's like web services they have to keep up and running and yep. they're building your app with their cells. So probably more intensive than the VPN gotcha. stuff. <laughs> yep. Not not a hundred dollars a year. Uh, and then uh, test flights finally coming to the Mac. So that's good. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Kind of crazy. That hasn't 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 happened before. But yeah. Happy to see it. OK. Uh, Apple Watch. Uh, yes. It's one of my favorite platforms out there. The only thing I asked for this year was please, please, Apple, that third party <laughs> apps and all apps be always on display enabled. I've had this watch, the Series 5, since it launched, and it's been so frustrating just seeing that dummy uh, digital uh, time when I am in any app other than workouts. And yep. they did it. They did it, Matt. We are getting an API. Third parties can do this. And many first party apps are enabling this, like d- d- directions, I believe. And I'm not sure if you have the list in front of you. Um. I don't, uh, I'm not looking at the list, but yeah, this is another one of those things where the coolest thing, (laughs) the always on screen gets noticeably better. Not a peep on stage about this. At least not that I noticed. Yeah, They mentioned it in very like five seconds at the API at the very, very end. And it was on the splash screen for like five seconds at the end of the watch thing as always Ah, on display. Splash screens. Yeah. (laughs) So that's where it was mentioned. But this is the the thing that's been frustrating me the most about the watch. It's like, yeah, there's always on display, but it's the most useless thing in the world because all it shows me is basically the watch face and that's it yep watch face and the fitness app and that was it and like yeah you turn by turn directions which is like the most obvious thing or like a stopwatch the like all of this is like so obvious like of course you would want that to stay on the always on screen and it just wasn't there and then when i saw that was there i was i was super excited already and then it took me i had to do like a double take and i was like wait and third party apps all right, let, 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 I'm ready to go. Let's <laughs> let's get these like betas installed now. Yeah, the watch beta is one I'm scared to install, so I'll let you uh, brave the water. Yeah, down. yeah, the watch one is dangerous because it locks you in. There's no downgrade path, <laughs> and it also means your iPhone is stuck on the beta because they will not talk to it. Your watch OS eight will not talk to iOS fourteen, so you're stuck on both betas until the end of summer. <laughs> 
So be careful. I will not, but be careful. And I'm looking through it. Um, Bluetooth connections from complications. Connect your apps directly to Bluetooth devices through your complications display information on the watch face. I don't know if that's a new... Th- I'm looking at the developer page for Apple Watch. I don't know. There's got to be some... In- hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Like, what would you pair with your watch? Uh, Maybe like a rate gym? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. But they spent minutes on the photos watch face but nothing on <laughs> some of yeah, these I guess details photos is the most important or most used watch face i was really surprised to hear that i i was not expecting that like i know i've seen people with it but i really thought the um uh the infograph or infograph module modular that's the one i'm using face. most of the day and i do switch to the photos face at night mm. yeah i see the infograph one like everywhere I, that's what i see on like most people's because it's it's also the one that displays brightest on the always-on display, so that's also a factor. For me. Oh, interesting, yeah. <laughs> it's like the most legible uh, at most times. Hmm. Yeah, it's but, like the only one that gives me enough complications, so I keep using it. But yeah, the driving thing, it's like I would be... Sometimes I'd leave my phone at home and just go for a drive, and I need to turn my turn. And it's the most frustrating thing where you literally... I had to use like the Siri watch face, and it would update once every like two minutes with the new thing uh. on there. <laughs> so... That's going to be so big. And uh, like the now playing screen, I hope there's like an always on version of that, which would be nice. Like there's a lot of there things. has to be. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That that is on its own. Like I, I made a whole list of things that I wanted in Watch OS 8. Um, and yeah, I just this this was like the number one thing. It had to get better. <laughs> there's an app shelf and messages that include gifts and a better text input, I guess, overall in the watch, which is nice. Yeah, for sure. I, this was definitely like the smallest section of the keynote, but there's some, there's some stuff in there that I think will make watch people happy. Yeah. And the so. portrait watch face actually looks really nice. Like it, it looks kind of beautiful, like a, be- a step up for, if you have the photos to back it up with. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it actually, I think it requires like the one they showed with like it, like the text showing partially behind the person. I think those require portrait mode shots. Yeah. I, I need to see if uh, animals are better with portrait mode these days. Cause that's what I really want. Ooh. Oh yeah. I know uh-huh. you can do it, but sometimes <laughs> those are a bit harder to capture. Yeah. They do totally work though. Yep. I'll, I'll definitely be poking at that. You'll see that on Twitter if I do. <laughs> and they might sneak in some extra watch faces this uh, fall, as they often do. Yeah, yeah. This Literally last year, I was like, oh, my God, they just added one watch face this year. That's so annoying. And then in the fall, they were like, here's 10 more. And they were great. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the Photos app got redesigned in a big way. It's like a real app now. And you can share photos via messages or email, email on the watch, which that's great. I wish more apps could definitely share stuff off of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... <sighs> I don't know how often people are looking at photos on their watch, but it, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say no to it. I mean, I would love a full out Safari app for the watch. Just very pared down. I like when you get into it through a messages, uh, URL surprisingly Mm -hmm. is very full featured and I can, you can fill out full forms and stuff on the watch. It works great. I would love a more streamlined way to get into that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I have in the past asked for a YouTube app that plays YouTube videos like on the watch and I know it's stupid, but like every once in a while, it would just be kind of nice. Yeah, totally. <laughs> to like, let, just play the video. Like I'm typing away, like I'll just, it'll play on my wrist. I'll see it at the corner of my eye. Like I don't need to um, see all the details. I'm sorry you shot it in 8K, but I'll watch it on my one inch screen. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then uh, I guess uh, Tai Chi workouts and Pilates workouts are in there. Sleeping respiratory rates and the Breathe app has been renamed where you're doing reflections and it's telling you to mm-hmm. be like thinking about certain things and. So that's all good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just it's a, a definitely uh, iterative. I think. Yeah, we didn't get any of the things on. Well, hardly any of the things that uh, you were hoping for with the big redesign of the control center. Yeah, I was hoping for control center things. I was hoping for like more ability, more of an ability to like edit your workouts after the fact. So like, if I get home and like twenty minutes go by and it says, "Hey, is your workout done?" and I say yes, it doesn't count those last twenty minutes if I don't want it to. So there's there's still stuff to do, but yeah, I mean it's it sounds like it'll be better, and I'm gonna try it out and pray that it doesn't destroy my watch this summer. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I'm sure there's lots still more to learn about new APIs and stuff for the watch and what can now be done because they're on the road to uh, watch independence. So we'll see if they make any strides this year that they didn't talk about in stage. Yeah, that's kind of a dream that I've forgotten about. Like we were like, oh, it's it's getting more and more independent from the phone, and then. Ec- kind of stopped being part of the conversation. Yes, it did. <laughs> well, anything else from today that you want to 
mention before we wrap it up? Um, I, I I think we covered we 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 covered quite a bit from it, so I don't think there is anything there. Um, I think the as I kind of reflected on what they announced today and what they talked about, it really kind of hit me how mature all these platforms are. Like this is the fifteenth update like update or 14th major update to the iphone's yeah. operating system like even the apple watch which still feels new it's its eighth version like crazy right these these things have been around for a while and like i think that expectation management is a thing that as a just a like a tech fan community uh we probably need to grapple with <laughs> is understanding <laughs> that these aren't going to radically change every year yeah like it's just not possible like these they've just gotten so much better we're not going to have like a year where they totally change the ui completely and like you know throw off 900 million users of or whatever however many like iphone users are out there like they're just not going to do that um and I think that, yeah, I, I think that there, I saw a few hot takes from people who are like really disappointed with what they saw today. And I think that, yeah, just our expectations need to be kind of in the right spot. Like we should af- absolutely ask Apple to do a lot and yeah. like improve these things because we pay them a lot of money. Uh, but kind of understanding like what that actually means, like in terms of what they can realistically do and what we should expect them to do, I think is just the thing I'm going to be keeping in mind going forward. For sure. And yeah, I'm super excited about what they announced today on all the platforms. You know, external display support was the only thing that I was just kind of sad about. But the things they did show me was like, mm-hmm. the thing everyone was fearing was, oh, the iPad's only useful if you have an external keyboard. And they totally fixed that. And that is amazing because now I'm actually going to probably do more work with my iPad and tablet mode. So it, that helps it become more of an iPad than it was yesterday. So that's that's great. Yeah, that's, that, that is interesting that they, they made the iPad more of an iPad. <laughs> and that made it better rather than making it more like a Mac. Yeah. yeah. Food for thought, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, where can folks find your awesome videos and writings about uh, Apple and other tech uh, stuff? Yeah. Um, I'd say the best place to find me now is on YouTube. I've got a channel called A Better Computer where I talk about uh, mostly productivity stuff, um, not highfalutin productivity stuff, but actual like, here's how you use this app to do a cool thing. Um, so I've been using, doing that for almost exactly a year at this point, a little over now. Um, so really like that. I'm trying to put out a couple videos a week there. So that's probably the best place to find me. And everything else I post to birchtree.me, a uh, blog I've been running for a long time. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for time tonight. It's been a lot of fun chatting and kind of digesting what happened today. Yeah, this was really helpful to me uh, k- kind of getting to grips with everything that they talked about. So thank you for having me on. Well, that was my discussion with Matt all about WWDC 2021. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel, A Better Computer, and check out all of his work over at birchtree.me. And thanks to Matt for his generous amount of time he spent with us uh, talking about all this great news and updates. And thanks to you for your time and attention tuning in to this episode. As a reminder, you can support the podcast over patreon.com slash iPadPros to get episodes early and with embedded chapter markers. With that, I'll talk to everyone again real soon. Thanks for listening.